When God created the world, there was nothing. And then he spoke the word, let there be light. And then the word was made flesh. And so today, if you feel that your life is stuck in the past, if you feel that you're there trapped in the old, I want you to start understanding that God is birthing something new in your life. And that is what Feast Conference 2020 is all about. God's going to speak to you and He will do something new in your life. I want you to be there. I want you to bring your friends. I want you to bring your family. And I want you to bring, yes, a faith that says God's going to do something new. Feast Conference 2020 in the beginning. I am desperate for anything to ease the burden, for something new, to give me anything that's certain, longing for a change, looking for a scheme, searching for a reason, not to stay the same. But in your hands I remain. I choose to heed your call. I leave it up to you. You who see my rise and fall. So cleanse me, disturb me, shake me to my core. Make me. FOD for the Soul, a bite-sized reflection by the Feast Ortigas District Builders, happening every Monday to Saturday at 10 in the morning. Friends, every 7, 10 in the morning, we have Break Feast, every Monday to Saturday, as we lead you to a short examine for a strong jumpstart to win your day. As we cap off our night, we present to you Late Night Snack, Monday to Saturday, every 10 in the evening as we lead you to another examine to end the day. Friends, Worship Night every Wednesday and Friday at 7.30 in the evening as we go deep for another praise and worship experience. As we come to you as One Feast Ortigas District Family, we invite you to our Feast at Home. This is a collaboration of the builders all throughout the district. Schedules are available on your screen. See you there! As the situation pushes us to stay online, we present to you brand new online offerings. You may visit the following pages flashed on your screen. You can also watch us on YouTube at the World Wide Web. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button for you to be updated on our future contents. To find out more, visit us at www.feastortigasdistrict.com. All of these are possible with the Lord. Through our dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much for blessing us with your love and support. Let us continue the cycle of generosity by giving your donations tights, and love offerings through Paymaya or by visiting our website at feastortigasdistrict.com slash give. Thank you so much for your support. Happy Sunday, brothers and sisters. It's a new week ahead, a fresh start. Isn't it exciting and it's so hopeful for us to start again? And like Jesus' love, there's always fresh mercies every morning. And it's the same love every day. Isn't it exciting to start again and take off from the past wrongs that we've done? And so today, I invite you to come and worship with us and take off and start a new journey with Jesus. Come on! I've searched in different places 
everyone. Welcome to Feast at Home. Welcome to the Feast Ortigas District. My name is Brother J. Paul Hernandez. I'm the fe- Feast Builder of Feast Green Hills and Feast Ortigas Tuesday. And this is your home. We are one big Feast Ortigas District. If you're a first-time attendee, 
please just comment below. Hi, I am a first time attendee here, and people will message you. Don't worry, di sila mag sasabi ng Mars pa utang, but they will say hi. We're we're um, from the feast, and we want to get to know you, and they'll just connect you and and lead you to the ministry. All right. So I know you sacrificed sleep, uh, you sacrificed things to be here, and I want you to know that God is noticing all your sacrifice and God will bless you um, in his way in his turn. Amen. Okay. So here in the feast, we, we talk about the book of Matthew. Now we're in the talk six of uh, miracles and more. It's the talk is called make me new. If you think you need to let go of something in your life, old things, old excess, old baggage, old hangups, let go muna. We we started this series in December. Oh, sorry. We started um, the, all the feasts everywhere in the world. We started talking about the Gospel of Matthew in December 2019. It's October now, as I record this, and uh, we have cha- nine. We're done with nine chapters, and we have 19 more chapters to go. So we're, we're really excited because we're really unraveling a lot of things about the Bible. And I love I love it because the, the writer, Matthew, this book is a brilliant writer. Every part, every word, every line is engineered to say what he wanted to say. There is always deep meaning in what he wanted to say. Before that, let's pray our favorite prayer here at the feast. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved, I am God's servant, and I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all venerate the word. So let me prove to you how amazing Matthew is as a writer. So after the Sermon of the Mount, he shared nine miracle stories. How many? Nine. Not eight. Nine. <laughs> We've taken up the first six already. The healing of the leper, healing of the centurion servant, healing of Peter's mother-in-law, calming of the storm, healing the healing two demon-possessed guys, and healing the paralyzed man. Here's an amazing thing. In between these miracle stories, Matthew inserts two follow me stories because the purpose of the miracles is to follow the miracle worker. Let me repeat. Let me look me in the eye and I want to look you in the eye and say this to your heart. The purpose of the miracles is to follow the miracle worker. We already read the first miracle story about two guys who wanted to follow Jesus but under conditions. Hindi ba tayo ganun? Lord, I worship you, I serve you, uh, eto, eto, eto. Pero Lord, I will follow you if. I will do this if. Lord, magsiserve mo, papakabait ako if. We want God to follow our rules. Have you noticed? There are moments in our lives, not just you, but also me, that we wanted to stop serving. We wanted to stop attending the feast. We wanted to run away when God was not following our schedule. We wanted God to follow our rules, but that's not how God's kingdom works. We are his children. We are here to follow the the king. We are here to follow God. So here's the chart. So the miracle... Leper, centurion servant, sick mother. So after those three miracles, inserts a follow me story of two would-be disciples, okay? And then the next is, the the next three were stormy sea, 
demonized men and a paralyzed man. So three powerful miracles. And why? what is this saying? Because the next story was the call of Matthew. It was another follow me story. So powerful. Because God will always reveal himself first in the miracle to us because God is always running after us. So I'd rather, my dear friends, that we follow God because maybe we don't see it yet. But every day in our life, God is doing miracles. God is giving us blessings, healing, and favor. So the, the, the last three, the next three, I mean, after the call of Matthew is the dead girl and sick woman, two blind men, and the mute man. After that, there's another follow me. The second follow me story was the call to Matthew, which is our key reading for the day. I just want one big message that I want to preach to you, or we builders want to preach to you. Jesus wants you in his team. Jesus wants to be with you. Jesus wants you to be part of his family. This Bible verse in a visualization form. So enjoy and read and be blessed. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. Later, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he said, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Then he added, Now go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. For I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. You know, this, this, this part is very important because this is very powerful because, you know, Matthew was outcast. People don't like him, but Jesus reached out to him. Remember that. Jesus invited him to be his disciple. Jesus wanted him just like Jesus wants you. And this story was special for Matthew. Why? Because it's his story. It was his conversion story. I can only imagine how he wrote these lines. He was probably smiling, crying, smiling, crying. There was so much kileg and ah uh, feeling in his heart. You know, Something I want to share to you recently that I've realized. I, I, because of the feast, because of business, and because of podcast recording, I've been meeting a lot of celebrities. Artista, models, or just people with, you know, influence. For a time, you know, I get starstruck for like 10, 15 seconds. But then afterwards, as I, I get to know these celebrities, I realize something. That celebrities are people just like you and me. They're looking for love. They're looking for acceptance. They're looking for a family. They're looking for love. And, and salvation is not only for those who are broken, um, not, not only for those who are from a broken family or, or, or poor, but everyone, everyone that is alive is part of God's salvation plan. Everyone is God's child. And I've seen that celebrities are, are normal people with just, you know, showbiz status because of their work. 
You know what's my point? Just as Jesus wants celebrities in his kingdom, in his team, in his family, Jesus wants you as well. You. Yes, you. Sabi mo, huh? Me? Yes, you. Huh? Bro, ako, weird ako. No, no, yeah, you. Jesus wants you. And right now, God is calling you by name. God wants to have a relationship with you. Jesus wants you. Jesus wants you. One last story before I, I, I share. I give the mic to Mike. <laughs> I love ecumenism and that means befriending all Christians and having brotherly dialogue with non-Catholics and Catholics alike. One time, I was talking to a senior pastor of a big multinational evangelical church. So they were our friends in the feast. Um, he knew that I was a Catholic lay preacher. I was I was leading a feast, feast builder, and and all of those things. And and throughout our our our, our event, we were in three day, three four days in in Indonesia in Bali. He eventually told me that, you know what, J Paul, I'm so happy with what the feast does. And I said, why? Uh, why are you so fascinated? Because he said this to me. Because you guys accept the church and you love God's people. And then you extend God's mercy to the broken and the lost. And sometimes I think Christians and not just Catholics forget that. And, and then as we got deeper, he shared this to me. Are you ready? He told me, you know, he's probably in his 50s. He told me, J. Paul, I used to be an altar server. I grew up in Italy. So the most Catholic <laughs> country in a sense, you know, beside Vatican. I grew up an altar boy. I grew up with all the Catholic traditions. I did everything. I, I, I probably know more Latin prayers than you. But I didn't see Jesus in the faith because I didn't have deep relationships within the faith. So painful. He was just serving, but he was not growing in spirituality with people because you know, you know, it the service was just a transaction, something he did, not something he was. You see, Christianity, Catholicism, being part of God's kingdom is a relationship. Being part of a, a family of Christ. He, he shared to me that eventually um, he found a relationship with Jesus in an evangelical church. And now he's one of the top pastors in that church. And then he's my brother. And, and I'm sharing this because a lot of us Catholics are leaving Catholic faith because we judge. We judge easily, harshly. And, and, and if people are broken and, and dirty, we don't we push them away. And that's what the reading is about. It's embracing the biggest sinners in this world. I am a sinner. And I'm so happy that God has accepted me to be part of this kingdom. I want to leave you with this question. As a Catholic, are we focused on loving God's people and extending mercy? Or are we busy judging others and pushing them away? Thank you for joining me today. My name is Brother J. Paul Hernandez. And let me call on the feast builder of the Feast Ortigas Monday session, my dear brother, Mike Ibiernas. Thank you so much, Brother J. Paul, for starting this wonderful talk with a powerful, powerful message. Hi, everyone! Kumusta po kayo? Oh my gosh, namiss ko po kayong lahat. I'm very much happy, of course, to experience this feast at home with all of you. At dahil namiss ko po kayo, may tanong po ako sa inyong lahat at alam ko naman talaga na namimiss nyo yan. So please, please, if, if, you, if you can, please answer this question that I'll be asking all of you today. Ayan, so my question is, what do you miss most of being together? 
what do you miss most of being together? Kasi alam ko hindi naman tayo masyado nakikita lagi. Nakikita lang tayo sa Zoom, nakikita lang tayo of course sa peace at home, pero hindi tayo nagkakasama. So what do you miss most of being together? Of course, ako ang nami-miss ko po talaga is the worship that we have together, all of us as one community praising God. And I pray, I know in my heart, no, in His most precious and wonderful time, sa pangalan po ng Panginoon at sa araw ng Panginoon in His proper timing, magkakasama po tayong lo- ole, lahat. Ayan. So, let's continue with the talk, you know. In ancient Israel, there was only one, one spiritual hospital. That's the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. Isa lang po talaga, no, ang, ang spiritual hospital. Yun yung tinatawag nilang parang spiritual hospital. Hospital. It was run by the priests, no. And th- these priests, they're they are called Sadducees, who were very rich. They they were very rich because they cooperated with. Okay, sige. Palitan mo yung term. Hindi sila cooperate, no. They actually chose, no, to really be compromised. Hindi lang compromised, but they actually pinili talaga nila eh, na magwork hand in hand with the Romans, no. They did this because they wanted to. They wanted to actually preserve their status. They wanted to preserve their wealth, and they wanted to preserve their power. No, that's why they they they. Nakipagsabuatan po sila. That's the right term. Nakipagsabuatan po sila sa mga Romans. No, and and these priests, they they they've actually enriched themselves with more power and more wealth. Kasi nagkaroon sila ng parang monopoly over the market stalls. Kung saan binibili yung mga iaalay dun sa spiritual hospital nila that's found in Jerusalem. And one, one, one time, every single year, during the time of the Passover, bibili ang mga tao dun kasi ito lang yung parang accredited na mga iaalay doon sa temple. No? At binibili yung mga may-ari ng mga stalls na yun are actually the priests themselves. So, commercial lang. Napanood niyo na po ba ang AD no sa Netflix? Napanood niyo na ba? No, AD is one of the those wonderful talagang um, um um series na napanood ko sa Netflix na talagang mas naintindihan ko yung mga sinasabi din at yung mga nababasa ko rin sa Bible. So if you have time, please watch that on Netflix. You should watch it kasi maiintindihan niyo yung yung pinag-uusapan natin dito especially on the status of how this priest no collaborated collaborated with the romans ayan so balik ulit tayo this temple the temple no yung sinatawag nilang spiritual na hospital nila because of its religious system it was not serving everyone else ang sineserve lang nila are those who can actually um yung kayang bumili, those who can afford to buy the offerings. At so kung sino lang yung mag-offer, yun lang yun ang mapapatawad. Pag wala kang offer, hindi ka mapapatawad. So they were not catering to everyone, especially the poor, the Samaritans, no, the lepers, the prostitutes, the tax collectors. Ito yung mga taong hindi tinatanggap. At that time, doon sa tinatawag nilang spiritual hospital. So kung may sakit ka, no or samaritan ka or hindi ka part ng congregation ng mga ng community na yon hindi ka pwedeng pumunta doon sa spiritual hospital na yon but here he comes Jesus the name of this man is Jesus he walked into it his this horrible scene and filled with overflowing love for this wonderful people no na yung mga parang rejected ng community he came into the scene no and because of his so much loved and he does not want to be served, he announced the coming of his kingdom. And when he announced the coming of his kingdom, people got the picture, oh my gosh, this, this is an, because the kingdom is coming and the kingdom is going to be near us, this is going to be another spiritual hospital. But instead of recruiting religious professionals, yung mga Bible scholars, yung mga priests, yung mga preachers, yung mga pastors, no, he, re- re- he recruited uneducated people. Fishermen. Peter, James, John, Andrew. No? And the most scandalous of all, he recruited a tax collector. He recruited, yun yung parang feeling ko, the most scandalous recruit. He picked a shady character named 
Matthew, the one who's, who wrote our gospel, yung pinag-uusapan natin ngayon, ni-recruit siya ni Jesus. No? And it's written in, in Matthew 9, and it says, As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth, and he said, follow me and be my disciple. Jesus said to him, so Matthew got up and followed him. Oh my God, what happened after that? Talagang it was earth shaking. Parang pili ko talaga nagulo ang lahat ng mga tao. You know, to, to show this controversial, parang ganito lang yan. No? If you lived in ancient Israel, who would want to be neighbors with, kung sino bang gusto mong maging neighbor? A Pharisee or a tax collector? Ulitin ko yung tanong ha. No, when you are living on on an ancient time, especially during the kung nandun ka at that time, sino gusto mo maging neighbor? A Pharisee, a Pharisee or a Sadducee? Or, or a Pharisee or a tax collector, 'di ba? No? Pharisees, pakita ko lang sa inyo parang ganito ang scenario pag pag ang Pharisee ang neighbors niyo, no? Pharisees were not actually bad people, no? I think they would be quite nice neighbors. Oh, may welcome lagi, masaya, may party, may pa-barbecue lagi, no? They were law-abiding church goers. They were perhaps Bible teachers. They prayed five times a day. You can almost be sure that they'll be quiet at night, no? Masaya ang buhay, di ba? Perhaps they would even sing worship songs and they would invite you, come on, worship with us, sing with us, di ba? But aside from that, your religious neighbors, they won't disturb you. They won't. No, no loud music. Wala. No, no loud parties. May mga parties from time to time, no? But they'll, they'll actually understand, no? That the pleasant parties with other religious leaders are just, you know, come together. But the guy, the tax guy, will be more um, disturbing. Pakita ko rin sa inyo yung scenario. Kung ang tax collector ang neighbor ninyo, oh my goodness, parang feeling ko ganito lagi. Ah, makikita ninyo sa bahay ninyo kung tax collector ang neighbor ninyo. No, tax collector was considered one of the most worst sinners in Israel. Kasi ang tingin ng mga tao sa kanila, no, kakunsaba nila ang Romans para nakawan ng mga tao. Ganun ang tingin ng mga tao. But of course, I'll give you reasons of why they're hated. Number one, because they were greedy, they were greedy cheating sorry for the term but greedy cheating bastards with no conscience no the roman government at that time they didn't pay taxes no collectors or walang salary at tax tax collectors were the ones who actually collected this ito yung mga nagko-collect no my fixed amount they were required a fixed amount of money that they should turn over to the empire and whatever money they collect above that amount, yung ceiling amount na yun, kasi dapat may required lang na ibibigay sa Roman Empire, ang sobra nun mapupunta sa tax collectors. As in. So kaya, they made a fortune out of their neighbor's misfortune. That's how they look at them. Second, no, Jews were intensely nationalistic and these tax collectors were traitors to their country. They were, parang feeling ko, they represented the circus government that the Romans installed. Diba? So, kung may neighbor ka na tax collector, my gosh, every single day, makikita mo talaga yung mga Romans nandun. No? And then, may dadalin yung mga Romans dun. No? Tapos, ibibeat up nila kasi hindi makabayad ng tax. And then, yung mga tax collectors na to, nakatingin lang sila. So, kung baga, kahit wala silang ginagawa, party sila ng maltreatment na nangyayari sa mga tao. And every night, you'll also have to contend with the taxman's rowdy parties because there will be a lot of drinkings, there will be a lot of women, there will be a lot of cursing. In those parties, you'll see the un- uncultured crowd, including prostitutes and pagans and idol worshippers. So itong tanong ko uli sa inyo. Who do you want to be the next door neighbor? The Pharisee? Or the taxman. You know, most of us, I, I would say, <laughs> kahit na ako, most of us, we would choose the Pharisee. We would choose to be neighbors with these Sadducees or these Pharisees. No, but again, here comes his name. Jesus. He chose the other guy. No, Jesus did something that's even more shocking. You can imagine that he chose to be neighbors 
No, with with this guy, he he chose this, and you can just imagine how lahat na mga tao nung tinawag niya si Matthew, parang feeling ko talaga bumagsak lahat na mga mata, lumaki yung mga mata natin, talagang na, na rattle tayong lahat, no? Because we all got surprised. But this is what God is telling all of us today. God wants to change the world, and He's forming a team. God is forming a team. Parang ganito lang yan. Etong team na to. Oh my God. Congratulations sa team na to. God is forming a team. Wow. Diba? God is forming a team. Parang ganyan lang yung mga nag-champions. Diba? But here's the most wonderful part. Jesus wants you in His team. He wants you to be in His winning team. You may feel unworthy. Uy, hindi naman ako bagay dan. Hindi naman ako para dyan. You may, you may feel unworthy, ungifted, no unqualified, but He's picking you anyway. Feeling natin, hindi man tayo ganun ka-tax collector as Matthew, but we all are on the same boat. We are sinners, no? We, we, we sin almost every single day, but Jesus is still choosing us, no? Jesus sees something in you. Jesus sees something in you and He's inviting you to be part of on his team of his team and later the following no may sinabi pa si si, si Jesus no on the next um, line of the verse may sinabi si Jesus later Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners obviously no tong si Matthew he he, he because of his lifestyle he grew up with the wrong crowd He, he, alam mo yun, yung mga kasama niya, yung mga taong kasama niya, iba, iba talaga. Iba sila, okay? Ito yung mga taong makasalanan. And while other religious leaders stood at, at, at a distance condemning these bad boys, yung mga kasama ni Matthew, eto na naman. His name is Jesus. Sumama, pumunta dun sa party. No? As in. Kaya nga napatanong to mga Pharisees, sabi nila, Why does your teacher eat with such scum? Yun yung tanong nila eh. No? And here's my question also for you. When was the last time you got accused because you actually hanged out with the wrong crowd? Ako a couple of times. Fini ko nga many times, especially during the time that I was serving in the youth. Um, and dami talagang moments that I had to be where the youth are. At maraming nagtatro, oh, ba't sumasama yan? Baka ito pa yung nagbabad influence. Or, alam mo yon. But I had to be where they are. And I had to be the Jesus to them. Minsan may mga nag pumasok sa ganito. Ako talaga, because I want to still make sure that I introduce Christ to all of them, no? sumasama ako, But I have to be a good example of what a true man and Christian should be. You know, today my wife and I, we get to talk to a lot of people. They're not perfect. No, most of them have problems. Some have been judged by people. And we always ask ourselves, kaming mag-asawa, kami na mismo nagtatanong sa sarili namin, why do we still connect and be friends with these people? But you know, we will realize, both of us, we will realize at the end of the day, We would always think, this is what Jesus wants us to do. This is Je- what Jesus wanted us to do. To be with these people. To be with these people who needed Him more. You know, here's what Jesus said to the Pharisees. When Jesus heard this, He said, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. You know, let me share with you Uh, my favorite co- quote about the church. Some say St. Saint- Augustine was the first one who said this, but it's not true. No, Whoever said this, it was a brilliant, and I so love this quote. Ang sabi dito, that's, the, that's why the church is not a museum of saints, but a hospital for sinners. And this is what I'm going to say about the feast too. The feast is not a museum of saints, but it's, it's a hospital of sinners. And Pope Francis released a version just like this. He said, the church is a field hospital after the battle. Our feast, our church is a field hospital after the battle. 
Alam nyo, naalala ko rin, when I came into a community, when I became part of the community, especially this beautiful community of the light of Jesus and the feast, no, I, I did not have a good life. But I became part of this wonderful, wonderful hospital of faith and of love. And that is what God is calling all of, all of us to do. He doesn't even want us to be nice, clean, white for a... Alam mo yun? He, he doesn't even want us to be the nice, clean, white for story building with fancy equipment and we call ourselves spiritual hospital. He wants us to be a makeshift tent on a muddy field. Imagine nyo yan, ha? with lots of injured people on stretchers, with kind-hearted doctors and nurses who have very little resources, but we all have love. May this be your call, brothers and sisters, to be a miracle to many. Let's all welcome Brother Ped Faitaren. Thank you, Brother Mike, for that energetic preaching for the, your message today. I'm Brother Ped, and I will be finishing today's uh, message. And, you know, as I start my part of the feast, I just want to say, you know, it's a sad fact that many of our churches now, tulad na sinabi ni Mike, no? They're not field hospitals, no? Why? Because they're not big on mercy. They're big on purity, no? Ang ginagawa parang, kailangan malinis tayo dito. Lugar to para sa malinis. We, we, it feels more like a military camp. Hindi sa field hospital, pero kampo, no? Parang the basic message is, if you have what it takes, kung ikaw ang may qualifications na hinahanap namin, if you're strong enough, you're disciplined enough, you're good enough, you pray a certain number of hours a day, yan, tatanggapin ka namin. And you know what? I believe that God is heartbroken na yung church niya hindi field hospital. And kasi instead of embracing sinners, what do we do? Sometimes we exclude them. And if you ask Brother Bo, kung kausapin mo si Brother Bo, what was the idea for the feast? He'll tell you. Ang sasabihin niya, alam mo, ang template niya was Matt's party, was the party of Matthew. Yung, 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 field hall, yung kanyang template. No? Matt's party. And what do we want to do? We want to, ano eh, we want to replicate yung radical, yung radical celebration of God's mercy. Because that's what Jesus did with Matthew, right? Diba? He was with Matthew and out of sinners and nandun yung mga disreputable na mga tao, prostitutes. And then what did he do? Tinanggap niya sila. Inaccept niya sila, especially si Matthew. And this is what the feast is for. We want a gathering where the worst sinners are welcome. Because it's not play the feast. This this thing that you're watching now, it's not for holy people. It's people like me who are struggling, people like you who are struggling, people who want to be better. Yeah, di ba? It's it's for people who need God's mercy. And why do I know? Because when I first attended, that's who I was, and I'll I'll get into it later, pa. Pero ano ba? Ano ba identity ng feast? It's mercy. Mercy is our identity. And I want you to read this with me. And he said, Jesus said, no? Now go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. For I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. Alam niyo ba yung sinabi ni Jesus na to? Hindi, hindi, hindi sa kanyang words to. He was actually quoting, he was actually quoting, ano, Hosea. Diba? This came hundreds of years before pa. Das, sinasabi to ng mga prophets tsaka ng mga psalmist. And sa Hosea, sabi niya, for I desire mercy, not sacrifice. In short, alam mo kung buhay si prophet Hosea today, he was alive today, ang sabihin niya, he will ask you, he will not ask you, do you go to church every week? He will not ask you, how many hours do you pray? Magaganda ba yung prayers mo? Hindi. You know, ang nasabihin niya sa'yo, do you show mercy to the sinful? Do you show mercy to the broken, to the wounded? Diba? Iyan ang nasabihin niya. Diba? Hindi niya sinabi nga, I want you to show mercy, not just offer sacrifice. Kasi madali mag-offer ng sacrifice eh. Pero showing mercy, mahirap yun. Why? Human nature. Judgmental tayo eh. No? 
And again, Jesus was not doing something which was new. He was actually quoting something that they have forgotten. Nakalimutan nila yan eh. Nakalimutan nila yan. Because why? The Pharisees, sobrang taas ng kanilang value on purity. Kailangan, ganito ka. Kailangan yung standards mo. Kailangan you follow the law. Pero what happens to mercy? What happens to to acceptance? No? So yun ang sinasabi ni Jesus. And alam mo, ito yung question ko sa'yo eh. Is your concept of church separate or is your concept of church some a place where we celebrate and alam mo yan ang yan ang problema eh even even back then no oh, and the disciples ito nga let's continue reading sabi dito one day the disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus and asked why don't your disciples fast like we do and the Pharisees do diba yun ang tinatanong niya ang sagot ni Jesus, no? actually, ang practical answer ni Jesus, eh, gagandalin na namin ng party. Eh, we just came from Matt's party. Pero, ang deeper answer na sinabi ni Jesus was this, do wedding guests mourn while celebrating with the groom? Of course not. But someday, the groom will be taken away from them and then they will fast. Diba? Alam natin to, Jesus actually fasted for 40 days. And alam din natin, the disciples also fasted. Kasi tinuruan na sila mag-fast eh, nung Sermon on the Mount. Pero bakit hindi sila nagpa-fast nung time na yun? They were not fasting because the kingdom of God will be marked by what? By celebration. Yung sinasabi niya, the kingdom of God will be marked by celebration. So, hindi lang tayo puro fast. Yes, we fast. Pero, ang question dito, gusto ba natin maging lugar na malungkot o lugar na masaya? And alam mo, I believe, when I was growing up, I, I used to believe that Church was a sad place. Bakit? Pag pumunta ka kasi, di ba? Ang mga tao, malungkot, seryoso. Pag magsalita ka, titingnan ka ng masama ng katabi mo. Pero sa feast, alam mo, kahit mo pagulong-gulong yung anak mo dyan, <laughs> walang magagalit sa'yo. Di ba? Nasyak ako nun, no, nung first time ko nakikita, di ba? And I remember, nasa ano kami, nasa Robinson's Galleria. And if, I don't know kung, if, if umabot kayo dun sa cinema, Di ba? Parang may konting, may platform yun eh. Sa likod ng preacher, may parang race platform na parang pa-slide. Tapos makikita ko minsan, may mga bata umaakit doon, nagsislide doon, oh, habang nitutok. And sabi ko, uy. Eh kasi may experience ako sa church talaga na may may isang beses talaga, galit, galit, mainit yung ulo ni Father nung araw na yun eh. So, tapos mainit din yung ulo ng mga matatanda dahil may mga bata na nagtatakbuhan, nagalit. Di ba? Parang, That was my picture of church before. But in the feast, hindi ganun eh. We are about acceptance. Kasi, alam mo, Matt's party was what? It was like the homecoming party ng prodigal son. Remember the story of the prodigal son? Bumalik siya, tapos sabi ng father, slaughter the fattened calf, tapos nag-party sila. Ganun. But something beautiful was happening. And if the church is a place na parang puro lang tayo sa mga mababait, sa mga tahimik, hindi na siya room for celebration. Ano na lang siya? Wala na siyang room. Di ka na, paano mo matatanggap yung mga prodigal saan? Pag pumunta sila doon, ang sasalubong sa kanila malungkot. No? The church needs to have room for prodigal sons, for people who are returning to church. And a lot of church groups are like that. They're more about condemning than connecting. They're more like telling you what you should not do as opposed to telling you what you need to do. That's why the church, it needs an overhaul. We need new wine. We need new wine. Kailangan natin ng bagong wine. Question, yung party nyo ba? Your party, this party, our church. Ano ba siya? Uh, meron ba siyang new wine? And what do I mean? Let's go read again. This another verse. It says, Besides, who would patch old clothing with new cloth? For, a new patch, for the new patch would shrink and rip away from the old cloth leaving an even bigger tear than before. And no one puts new wines into old wine skins, for the old skins would burst from the pressure, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. New wine is stored in new wine skins so that both are preserved. Alam mo, una hindi ko ito maintindihan. Pero may praktikal ano ito eh. Di ba pag, kasi siyempre, nung, nung panahon na yun, wala naman tayong downy, wala naman. Pag nag, yung damit mo, pag nagkabutas, siyempre lalagyan mo yan ng patch, di ba? Pag, pag, nilabhan mo yan, yung damit, magpag, pag bago, nagsishrink. 
So imagine mo yung damit mo luma, lagyan mo yan ng patch na bago. Pag nilabang yan, magsiswing ka. Ano mangyayari? Mapupunit yung damit. Yun yun eh. And ano yung sinasabi sa old wine skin? Kasi noong time na yun, hindi naman sa bote nakalagay yung wine. Eh. Nakalagay sa leather wine skins. And if bago yung wine, di ba, pag luma na yung wine skin mo, di ba, ano siya eh, ang leather nagsistretch yan. So pag naglagay ka ng bagong wine, lumalaki siya, nag- lumalaki siya nagsistretch. Pero pag luma, hindi na yan nagsistretch. So mang- ano mangyayari if you put old wine, if you put new wine in old wine skins, ano mangyayari? Puputok yun. Kaya kailangan mo maglagay ng new wine skin para meron pa siyang room to stretch. And ano yung sinasabi natin dito? Ang buhay mo ba? Does your life need more joy? Do you need more celebrations of mercy? Di ba? Kung, kung ganun ang sagot mo, if, if you want more celebrations of mercy, you need new wine. And sino yung new wine? Jesus is the new wine. No? Kasi nung time niyo, the Pharisees, yung, yung religion nila was broken. Why? Kasi they were like the old wine skins. They were set in their ways. Ayaw na nila ng mga bago. Ayaw nila ng mga bagong tao. Diba? Parang, bakit nyo, bakit nyo tinatanggap yung mga tao? Ngayon, masama sila. And alam mo, marami sa ating guilty sa ganito, especially the longer that you are in ministry, you slowly, you don't notice it, but you will slowly become a Pharisee if you're not careful. What do I mean? Kung ikaw ay dating palamura, kung ikaw ay dating palainom, at nagpifis ka na, matagal ka na nagpifis, mapapansin mo, na yung mura mo hindi na ganun. Masyado, mapapansin mo na yung hilig mo sa mga bisyo mo dati mababawasan. And it's very tempting to just decide that you want to stay with people who are like you. To just, I just want to spend my time with people who are from the feast because these people from the feast are like me. And yung mga dati, ayoko na makihalubilo sa kanila. Hindi natin naiisip na ang purpose kung bakit nagbabago yung buhay natin is para tanggapin sila at para makita nila kung ano yung pagbabago sa atin at para gustuhin nilang magbago din. Amen? Because the truth is, a lot of people are looking for mercy. They don't want judge. Diba kaya nga sila ayaw pumunta ng simbahan eh? Because they feel they're being judged as sinners. And there are so many people like Matthew who are looking for God. So many people. Alam mo, I've met a lot of people na sincere talaga sila. They wanted to go to God. So they thought that they would find Him in church so they go to church. Pero ano nung ang sumalubog sa kanila doon? Mga serious face na mga tao. Ang sumalubog sa kanila doon yung mga relig- highly religious people na parang, o oh, ganito ha, magdasal ka muna ng ganito. Kailangan, ganito. Kailangan. And ano mo, narealize ko yan eh. Kasi as the longer we serve, siguro, baka nga yun nga nangyayari, we want our kids to be like that. But the truth is, our kids have their own lives. The truth is, they, di ba? Uh, the people around us na sumasali sa atin, minsan meron din silang sariling mga kaibigan. And then, ito yung question eh. Is your place more accepting than the secular world? Kasi ganito yung nangyayari. They, they go to church and what do they do? But what happens to them, they find people who are serious looking, stern-faced, and they feel judgmental. So, ang iisipin nila, I think mas maganda yung dati kong buhay. Doon na lang ako makikihalabiyo sa mga dating kaibigan ko. Di ba? Parang ganito yan eh, like may, may tao, he wants to join the feast, and then biglang, o oh, baguhin mo muna yung buhay mo. Diba? Parang, uh, you need to cut your hair, kailangan mag long sleeves ka para go pakita yung mga tato mo, mga ganun. And then isipin niya, alam mo, baka yung mga kaibigan ko sa secular world, parang mas caring sila, doon na lang ako. And brothers and sisters, that is not what the feast is about, that is not what Jesus is about, that is not what Matt's party is about, it's about acceptance. And you know what? Jesus wants you to be in His team. Sabihin mo nga to, He wants me to be in my team. And how can you do it? Very easy. Just share this video. And if you have the time, and if you have the energy, and I hope you have the commitment, you can do this. You can do, you can do um, feast lights with us. I'm going to show you a, a photo. Ito, feast light to, ng mga jeepney driver. Can you see? Can you show this? Uh, jeepney drivers. Diba, lockdown siya, naubusan sila ng livelihood. So, nung ginawa nila, they support each other. Nagkakaroon sila, nagigita sila sa kali. Diba? And then, anong ginagawa nila? Nagkakaroon sila ng get-together nila. Tapos, they talk about God's Word. Diba? We also have feast lights with OFWs, domestic helpers, caregivers, 
Minsan nga mga illegal eh, sa mga kung saan bansa. And some of them, what? They're living in immoral relationships. They, meron silang, they're living, they're living uh, with somebody. Sometimes hindi nila asawa O minsan nga may asawa pa sila. But you know what? We accept them. Why? Because it is not our job to change people. Gusto ko lang ulitin yan, ha? It is not your job to change people. That's God's job. Ang trabaho lang natin is to accept them. And bahala na si Lord. You know, because if, if, you need, if people need to change, Jesus will ch- change them. Why? Because He was the one who changed us. Amen. Diba? Brothers and sisters, ulitin ko lang, this is Matt's party. This is Matthew's party. And you can join. You can do this with us. You can have a feast light or you can have a Zoom meeting. You know, or every week, magkita-kita tayo at the end of this feast, at the end of today's feast, meron tayong get-together. Meron tayong, meron tayong mga, mga get-together kada mga sessions. For, for my Saturday session, it's right after this feast. You, you attend this. And what do you do? We, we have life together. Minsan, nagkukwentuhan lang kami. We just have laughs. Minsan, we cry. But anong point nun? We have a journey together. Because that's how we recreate Matt's party. That's how we create because Jesus wants you to be in his team. And brothers and sisters, as I end, alam mo, I want to share, no? This talk is very meaningful for me. And the reason why is because I was a product of Matt's party. Ako, um, in case you don't know me, I, do, I, I never had a pedigree in, in ministry. Hindi ako galing sa pamilya na Diba? Na nagsaserve, na nagsisimba. Hindi. I grew up unchurched. When I first walked through the feast doors 10 years ago, unchurched ako. And pagpunta ko doon, anong feeling ko? I was so... Siyempre, nung time na yun, diba? Lawyer ako. Um, galing ako sa very secular na mundo. For me, normal na makakita ng corruption. Normal makakita ng... Normal makakita ng mga tao na unfaithful. Normal. And then bilang pupunta ako dito, ang feeling ko, ang babait ng mga tao. So I, I was worried and I, I feared that I was going to be judged. But you know what? Ang sumalubong sa akin was mercy. Ang sumalubong sa akin, acceptance. Ang sumalubong sa akin, trust. Di ba? I, while I was still, you know, and, and I still am a work in progress, pero dahil talaga super, super work in progress, I was asked to serve. And then that changed my life. Why? Because I wanted to be better. I wanted to deserve what was given to me. I wanted to be the person that God saw me to be. And brothers and sisters, yan din ang message ni Lord sa you today. You know, this place, our, our feast is for, for people who are broken. You may be broken. I'm still broken. But God is fixing me. And brothers and sisters, we can fix each other. Amen? And if, if you have a talent, you have a skill, and you have the commitment, please serve with us. Serve with us. Kahit anong service lang, mag, madali lang ngayon. You, just let us know how you can serve. And pakasabihin mo sa akin, bro, wala naman akong skills, hindi ako qualified. Alam mo, hindi importante yon. And I will tell you what they told me years ago. Sabi nila, God does not call the qualified. He qualifies those He calls. And I believe He is calling you today. Amen? Let's pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for reminding me that I need to throw more mercy parties. Thank you for reminding me that I am also a work in progress, that everyone around me is a work in progress, and that I should be more merciful, more accepting, more loving. Lord, use me as a channel of your mercy, as a channel of your love, as a channel of your acceptance. Lord, remove in me the desire to change people. That's not my job. My job is to love them. And Lord, it is your job to change our hearts, to change our lives. And we surrender our lives to you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Lord, thank you for giving us this ability to see you, ability to know you, ability to hear you, Father God. You know what's in our hearts. These dreams that you planted is no accident. Father, on the darkest times that we think that we are unworthy of your love, that we think that we are too weak, vulnerable, fragile, to even chase on your love. I know that you will prove us otherwise, because every day you prepare for us the same kind of love that you had when you made us in your likeness, in your image. Father, we ask right now that you heal us, whatever form it may be, may be physical, mental, spiritual. Lord, embrace us right now as we praise you, as we worship you together as one community. So with open arms I sing, now I let my walls come down, let your presence fill me now. I receive your love, by your grace I have been saved. I receive this life, by your cross I've been set free. You are everything, you are in love.
Brothers and sisters, if you have your novena to God's love, please lift it up. If you don't have it, just hold your heart. It's a symbol of surrender and to tell the Lord that I have a dream. Lord, thank you for placing these dreams in my heart. These are dreams that you placed here because I know you want me to bless the world. Lord, use me, use me mightily. And I lift up all of these dreams because I know, Lord, that in your time, in the best version ever, kahit matagal na po ako naghihintay, naniniwala ko, Panginoon, ibibigay mo sa akin ang hinihingi ko in the best version ever. All of these dreams will come true in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much and I hope you were blessed. I hope that this, this place, this feast, this online place is a place of love, is a place of acceptance. And I encourage you to be the same. And I encourage you to open a light feast. And again, I want to say thank you to all of the people who have been so generously giving despite this pandemic. You know who you are. May God bless you. May God continue to bless your finances in all the rest of your life. And for all of you who want to give, I, I, again, I thank you in advance for being so generous. And uh, I encourage you uh, to continue the cycle of generosity so that we can continue this mission, so we can do the things that God is asking us to do. Again, maraming maraming salamat po, and thank you for giving. And for details, you can just look on the screen, and we will show you uh, where you can go. You can actually go to our website. Uh, again, thank you so much. God bless you. God keep you. And see you again in our next feast. Bye-bye.